I'm going to talk to you today about the notion of virtual heritage and how it's important for architectural students and visualisation students to engage with. I've been teaching architectural computing for over 20 years now and in that time computing in architecture has grown from being something that a minority of uh, drafts people would uh, engage with to being something that's inherent in everything we do. The continual advance of digital technologies and software programs has enabled architects and designers to design ever more complex buildings, communicating them in ever more realistic ways. My primary interest in architectural computing is not in the design of architectural space, but in the communication of it. Architectural visualisation 10 years ago was but a niche discipline, reserved for the grand projects commanding large budgets. Today it is an industry, an expanding profession hungry for skilled recruits, equipped of course with the necessary digital skills, but also with an eye for composition, the aesthetic and the dynamic. In 2010, we created the Master's Programme in Architectural Visualisation to focus students' attention on the communication, the visualisation, rather than the design of architectural space. This work typically involves the depiction of as yet unbuilt structures, such as penthouse apartments, office blocks, luxury hotels and so on. However, the skills and ambition that we instill in our students to produce imagery of this type can also be directed to imagery of the past, not just the future. Putting aside any discussion about the difficulties associated with historical interpretation and evidence-based guesswork, heritage sites provide excellent material for students to develop their visualisation skills. The term virtual heritage has been around in one guise or another for many years now. Computers have often been used in the recording and dissemination of heritage sites following the practice of architecture, albeit somewhat more slowly. Alonzo Addison in his work, Emerging Trends in Virtual Heritage, describes three primary remits of virtual heritage as documentation, representation and dissemination. Documentation can be briefly described as the accurate three-dimensional recording of heritage data, such as site surveys, photogrammetry and 3D scanning. Representation is the term given to the creation of three-dimensional models of heritage buildings, both in wireframe and in rendered form. Finally, dissemination, Addison describes as anything from immersive networked worlds to in situ augmented reality. In setting out these three distinct areas of virtual heritage, Addison allows us to categorise the various types of work we do. And our work touches on each of these three categories. However, it is the dissemination of virtual heritage that I would like to talk to you about today. Visualisation allows the dissemination of heritage work in a way that has not been possible in the past. Until recently, museums and heritage centres have relied upon artists to create an impression of how a building may have appeared. This said, the increased levels of realism that can now be achieved through computing present other difficulties for historians and archaeologists. Through the Master's Programme in Architectural Visualisation, we introduced the concept of virtual heritage, pointing out that the field provides an additional source of employment following graduation, as well as the typical architectural visualisation paths. We start this work through simple modelling and rendering exercises, tasking students to create high quality static images of current as well as past buildings. Students quickly learn the similarities between modelling contemporary and historic buildings, but they also learn the differences, such as the absence of measured information, disparity between source evidence, and a lack of photographic or pictorial data to refer to. These challenges prepare students for further virtual heritage work later in the course. The games industry, until recently, has had little to do with the field of architecture. Apart from a few interactions with games such as SimCity and more recently Minecraft, the two industries have developed and advanced travelling along their own separate paths. However, the technologies used in both fields are now beginning to come together, and architects are realising the potential for games technologies to be used in the communication of architectural space. Of course, recent developments in virtual reality is driving this forward. The opportunity to immerse clients in buildings that they are financing is incredible. In 2012, Epic Games released the fourth version of their games engine, Unreal. This proved to be a game changer, no pun intended, in both the games industry and in architectural visualisation. The games engine, like its predecessors, provides a platform for developers and programmers to create levels and arenas for video games. 
With the release of Unreal Engine 4, Epic Games realized the potential for this software to be used in applications other than just games. The increased quality of textures and lighting brought the possibility of real-time visualization to the forefront of architectural work. The real-time aspect of this new medium should not be underestimated. To this point, clients would typically have relied on pre-rendered animations or still renders of their buildings, viewing edited scenes and dynamic views. With real-time visualization, the client now has an opportunity to walk forwards, walk backwards, review a space, and then re-review a space, perhaps from a different angle. Whilst real-time visualization has been possible for a number of years now, it was the release of Unreal Engine 4 that put the realism into real time. The games industry has long relied upon historic narratives to provide immersive reasons to roam around ancient sites and apocalyptic worlds. Ubisoft's series Assassin's Creed is a good example of this. The first edition of the game set players in the 12th century Jerusalem on a quest of discovery. Whilst there is room for artistic license in the development of the game, the similarities between Ubisoft's Jerusalem and the real city are clear. But most importantly, games like Assassin's Creed highlight the potential use of games to disseminate historic sites and architecture. Games technology is now the latest branch of virtual heritage. The architectural visualization course develops this theme, with students using games technologies to recreate historic sites, building on the heritage work they have already done. Most recently, our students have been working on an archaeological site here in Canterbury, St Augustine's Abbey. The abbey was created by Augustine, who is renowned for reintroducing Christianity to England in 597 AD. The abbey and monastery, whilst regularly updated and extended, stood on the site for almost 1,000 years until 1538, when the abbey and monastery fell victim to the reformation of King Henry VIII. The site quickly fell into disrepair, with only a fraction of the former structure still standing. A hospital was built on top, and the abbey was largely forgotten until the 1930s, when excavations began in earnest. The site is now managed by English Heritage, and it is with this organisation that we are collaborating on this project. Currently, visitors are welcome to the site through a small museum containing displays detailing the story and history of the abbey and monastery. Whilst the museum is full of information and contains various artefacts and pieces of masonry beautifully displayed to help illustrate the former building, it is still difficult to visualise the abbey and surrounding buildings properly without the benefit of a vivid imagination. Working in close collaboration with English Heritage, our students have been modelling the abbey as it would have looked in 1538, just prior to the site being closed. The students have experienced the challenges of working on a heritage site of this kind, with much of the information given to them based on other examples and archaeological information. Our colleagues at English Heritage have also been transported along with us on this voyage of discovery. The reconstruction of the abbey, albeit in a virtual environment, has shown that assumptions made about the abbey heretofore may be inaccurate. This work shows that through the modelling phase of this project, students are engaging with the representation category of virtual heritage, and that this is enabling experts to re-evaluate the data that currently exists. Indeed, this project touches on all three of Addison's virtual heritage categories. Students are involved in the accurate collation of site survey information, the documentation category, the accurate but efficient modelling of buildings, both existing and ruined, the representation category, and finally, the visualisation, once installed as a real-time virtual reality experience in the museum this summer, will allow visitors to experience the building in a way that has not been possible for nearly 500 years. This part of the project is, of course, the dissemination of the work. So to conclude this presentation, it must be recognised that the notion of virtual heritage is not a new or innovative phenomenon. However, the digital tools that virtual heritage uses have permeated into the heritage and tourism industries on a comparatively small scale. There are opportunities to increase the use of virtual heritage in the dissemination of historical information by combining both architectural and archaeological expertise together with video game development technologies. The availability of affordable immersive technology such as VR headsets and augmented reality will be imperative to the effectiveness of the dissemination of virtual heritage. Working in this area provides an opportunity for visualisation students to expand their skill set and create opportunities to work in new industries, 
and I believe this provides an excellent opportunity for architectural students to engage in the history and theory of architecture at a more intimate level. Thank you.